Welcome to Michigan Reimagined, a spotlight podcast. And here's your host, Chris Buck. All right, so this pesky pandemic has reduced society's willingness to dine in restaurants or frequent busy stores, so delivery really has become king. Today we have a guest that has a unique spin on delivery in Greater Lansing. So welcome the founder of Red Bike Delivery, Mr. Jeremy Hurt. Welcome, Jeremy. Well, thank you for having me. No, it's my pleasure. So, you know, Red Bike Delivery, spin on delivery. I, I like that, it. You like that? I threw that in there. <laughs> um, so delivery by bicycle really isn't new to the world, right? If you go to New York City or say, you know, you see these guys zipping in and out of traffic and stuff. So the idea of de- delivery systems on bikes uh, isn't new to the world, like I said, but it is new to Lansing, right? Are you the only one doing bike delivery in Lansing, as you know? It it, it seems that way. Uh, I know that there have been other companies in the past. There was that uh, Go Green Trikes that uh, right. that did some like last mile kind of delivery stuff. But as far as like the model that I have, I don't think anybody else has done it, or I know nobody else is doing it. So uh, right on, yeah. So Domino's, I think, has bike delivery people now, but I haven't seen them out in a while, so they're probably afraid of the cold. <laughs> well, we'll talk about all of that. I can promise you. All right. So, um, so how the heck did you embark on this journey? I mean, I know you in the community a little bit. You've done some other stuff uh, mm-hmm. that I'm aware of, but seeing Red Bike, and I think you're about a year in. How did the idea get started? Um, yeah, I actually just had my one year anniversary of my first delivery on December second. So, um, but. When I was when the pandemic started, I was working in the restaurant business, and obviously, you know, everything was shutting down, and there was some worry about what was going to happen in the future. Um, like I was pretty sure everything was going to open back up, but <clears throat> when was a good question. Um, yep. So I had that time to just reflect and and really look at my life and see what I wanted to do with it, and not going back to work for someone else was a big one on the list. Um, and I just happened to. Uh, get into a conversation with someone about um, doing deliveries for Goodfellas downtown. Okay. Um, and that kind of like started the conversation that started my interest in it. And then it just snowballed and I'm just trying to keep up with it now. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Got it. So um, I, I did read somewhere that you're, you, you know, you are an environmentalist too, right? Mm-hmm. You believe that the mission of delivering on bikes versus the cars, you know, makes a lot of sense. Tell me about how that passion kind of started or why that drives you. Um, so in my research, like before I started the business, um, I looked into, you know, how DoorDash was doing things and those other app companies and stuff like that, just to see, you know, how, what I could take from them. Um, and one of the stats on there was that, uh, they do 800,000 deliveries a day, uh, which is like 50% of the business, uh, total. And so I started like calculating the emissions that were put out from each delivery and it's just an insane amount, Hmm. you know? So like with our goal of, you know, going carbon, you know, neutral and stuff, it's not sustainable in my eyes. So something's got to change. Right. So they're doing 800,000 deliveries a day. I mean, you're only doing 700,000 a day. Right, (laughs) right, right. right. I'm (laughs) just kidding. (laughs) Um, no, so, you know, I haven't thought about it that way. So that's, that's, uh, yeah, that is, that is a lot of, uh, internal combustion engines on the road every day, you yep. know, delivering and in, in, instead of bicycles, which is great. So now, you know, do you have other partners that are riding with you for red bike or are you a one man show or does it kind of ebb and flow based on demand? How's that work? Uh, at the moment it's just me. Um, I have a few restaurants that I work with directly and then if people want to like get a hold of me, they can just get a hold of me, but I'm getting close to the point of needing somebody right um like real close so right um uh, it'll probably have to wait until you know it gets warmer out because most people aren't <laughs> too right. thrilled about getting on a bike but eh. understood so that is one of the competitive advantages i guess of being in a car which you yes. mentioned the door dashes and the uber eats and grubhub and all those other delivery services um and I got to believe that one of the differentiators between them and you is probably geography right i mean you probably aren't going to run you know, a sandwich to Okemos or out to the Grand Ledge on a bicycle, right? right so right. you've got a limited range, or, and which again, isn't a problem as long as you're busy enough and you're delivering great service, don't overpromise, and you should have a viable entrepreneurship for yourself. So what is your range? Um, so I tend to set it at about 
uh, I'm working on setting up a, a, a zone delivery system, so it'll be like based on zip codes. Basically, you can okay. You could go in, and once I get my website built and everything, you can go in and, and type in your your zip code, and it'll tell you the restaurants that you can order from. Um, but right now, I'm I'm going with like about a three mile radius from okay. places from either their house or the restaurant, whatever. Um, because when I again when I was researching it, um, the number one complaint from people was that the food was nasty or cold or rubbery or whatever when it got to them. So I want to make sure to to not have that problem. I can give them something else to complain about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw on your social media and what uh, a variety of places on on your either your website or social media. I don't remember which, but you you show pictures of some of the technology that you've invested in. I mean, this is no joke. I mean, you're not just throwing these sandwiches or, or hot foods or whatever into a backpack and driving three, you know, pedaling three miles to someone's house. I mean, you've got equipment and not only for yourself from warming, which we'll talk about in a second, yeah. but from the, from what you're being delivered is being protected better oh, yeah. than I would have imagined. So tell me a little bit about what you've got. Yeah. Um, you know, I start, when I started, I, I had a backpack, <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, uh, I, I knew that had to change real quick. So, uh, I, I went online and started looking at things and what the options were and I found this really cool like backpack. It's basically like a big square that's on my back um, that's, you know, insulated and um, uh, it has a couple levels to it. So if there's hot and cold, you can keep them separate. Um, And then I have the same thing for um, a a bag that uh, I pull behind me with a trailer for like bigger orders. Okay. Um, And it's the same. It has uh, divisions in it so you can keep hot stuff hot and cold stuff cold if you have to take both at the same time. Got it. Okay. And, uh, you know, so let's talk about it. we're recording this in January of 2022. So <laughs> right now it's about 22 degrees outside and a little bit of a breeze and some snow on the ground. How the heck do you manage winter on a bike delivery service? Um, well, I learned my lesson last year, like the hard way. Um, I figured, you know, some jeans and the sweatpants and whatnot, you know, would be good. And a couple pairs of socks and gloves. And I found out that there's like not a single pair of gloves that will keep your hands warm in this, uh, environment, uh, because they're, you know, they're, they're sitting still, right. And, you know, and all the winds just blowing on them and, and, and everything. And, uh, I'm going, you know, up to 35 miles an hour. So, right. uh, I can get a pretty good wind flow in my face. And, um, so I found, uh, well, battery powered gloves have been, and, and, and socks have been a great help. Okay. Um, and then I have like these mitts that go over the handlebar too, to, to break the wind. It's like neoprene or something like mm-hmm. that, that, that it's made out of. So, and then I have those for my shoes too. They cover your shoes, um, to break the wind. So I've been, <laughs> and I saw that on, on, you know, another picture on your social, um, and I've seen that on motorcycles. You know, mm-hmm. some people do ride in the cold. I mean, obviously, you got to make sure that you're not going to wipe out because it's slippery. But if it's cold and dry and safe, they have those big, like, they're permanently mounted. Like, you pull your hands out of it. And if you look at the bike, even if nobody's on it, those things stay on oh, yeah. it, right? That's what, and you could put your hands in there. And that that's, that's fantastic. So, I got to believe you've got near misses or funny <laughs> stories or painful stories. I mean, how has... Uh, so you, you, so your service does run all winter yeah, and you're able to do this and you're able to do this, you know, somewhat safely. Yeah. <laughs> have you gotten hurt at all or have you, have you encountered really bad conditions or the inability to get to someone's front door because of the conditions? Um, so the only time that I got hurt was actually in the summertime. Oh. Um, I took a nice flight over the handlebars, um, just a weird situation. I don't really know how it happened. I just know that my brakes tightened up way too much and I went flying. Uh, I was, uh, luckily I wasn't on a job. Um, so I didn't have any, you know, food or anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that was thankful. But, but, but man, when, when you hit 40, you don't bounce back from those injuries <laughs> quite as quick because I was hurting for a while. Um, but I learned my lesson and, you know, I continued on. I haven't had too many like, close calls with like cars opening their doors on the road or anything, but I've definitely, there's definitely a lot of people in Lansing that don't understand the, the laws of, and and when it comes to the road and where bikes belong. Um, so like there's, you know, there's, we're basically like a car. I have to stop at every stoplight. You know, I have to wait for it to turn green. I can't just blow through them. Uh, and, uh, and I'm supposed to ride on the far right of the road as far as I can. Uh, and that's, the sidewalks, it's actually illegal to ride a bike on the sidewalks in downtown Lansing. Okay. So, 
So if you see me on the street, just be nice. We're both trying to get to the same place. You know, <laughs> right. just, we're just trying to get to places safely. So <laughs> right. So now I. I uh... I, I guess it didn't occur to me as I was preparing for this um, that you're not just delivering food. That you, I mean, obviously, you know, those bikers that I was talking about in in uh, New York City, a lot of them started. I mean, they they got like over the shoulder, like back, um, like briefcase type stuff. Mm. So right, there, so there's. Are you transmitting other things other than food? I guess is the punchline to my question. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, um, I've recently, I somebody needed an air filter for their furnace. Yep. Um, so I went and picked that up. Uh, I, I've taken um, uh, shirts that uh, uh, alt printing printed to, down to like uh, Blue Owl. Okay. Uh, so like, uh, yeah, basically. Um, and those, when I'm delivering things like that, it it, it expands my range as well uh, because it's not going to go bad. So I can go a little bit further um, right. with with stuff like that. Like if you needed dog food or something, you know, I can go get that or um, whatever whatever needs to be picked up. Right now, so, okay. So let's talk about the mechanics of this. How do people? know when you're available and how do you know when to block out that you're not available right i mean if you got to run to you said goodfellas and you mentioned blue owl and i mean those are reasonably close to each other but how do you organize to make sure you're meeting everyone's satisfaction um well i have it set up uh on my website to make like an appointment um i'm having a little trouble driving people to that part of it but okay. um it's it's basically it's kind of like an understood I think I I think I feel like it is that like I could be out on a delivery so if you call I might need a minute to get to you um and that's why I like I have them get a hold of me uh to put before they put in the order that way it's not just like okay. hey I got this order and can you go grab it um instead if you just get call me or text me or whatever and and see what where I'm at or you know there's not too many times where I'm just swamped, um, mm -hmm. but like lunchtime can can get a little crazy downtown. So, right, right, yeah. Um, but uh, eventually, uh, when I have my website, it'll be set up more like a um, you know <clears throat> like the app delivery systems where I just get notified of things and and I can shut things off and turn them back on and and whatnot. So right, okay. So in the meantime, how would you like people to get? in touch with you tell us over the air so when people are saying i want to use this guy's services what do you want them to do sure um either e either messenger on facebook like through the red bike uh delivery page on facebook or um i have i'm on google maps so you can find me okay. there uh and then that'll you know give you all the information uh i have a phone number a business phone number on there um which I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head because I got like a Google Voice number, yep. you know. Um, but it's it's all on there, uh, and then you can either text or call. Like, and, and I'll, I'm I always have my phone on me, so yep. there's a there's a ninety five percent chance I'm going to answer within. 10 minutes. So. Right. Sounds like text might be better than voice call since you're going to be over the handlebars right. most of the time that they're calling. <laughs> yeah. And so that number is on your social media page and you do have a website and there's not a ton of content. You said there's, yeah. there's more to be delivered, but that phone number is findable pretty easily by looking at red bike delivery. Yes. Okay. So yep. red is it red bike delivery.com. Uh, dot co dot co. Okay. Yeah. And then it's on red bike delivery on all social media platforms too. Right on uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I haven't got too far into the TikTok world, but <laughs> <laughs> we're well, gonna need a GoPro for yeah, that, right? I know, it's right? all video driven, I think, right? <laughs> yep. Okay. So um all right. So people are gonna uh go to your website or social platforms, they're gonna find your phone number, they're gonna save it, right? Into yes. their into their deal, and they're gonna fire off texts and say, Hey, I'm looking to order food from wherever. Mm hmm you know, what, what's a good time for me to order that for you to deliver it to XYZ address, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, are you free right now? Like even that, right. you know, yeah. Just if I am, of course I can come out. So yeah. Now are you seven day a week? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> but like eight in the morning to 10 at night are the hours that I've put on that are my operating hours. Um, I haven't, uh, found much before 11, uh, you know, as far as business goes. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then, then like past like seven because every you know all the restaurants close so early now that uh right. there's not much not much left to do after the sun goes down really right 
So you're essentially just kind of an on-demand <laughs> delivery guy. Yeah, I'm on call all day, every day. <laughs> Got it. So just keep your eye on your phone. Keep it charged. Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And keep so- everything charged. I have so many things plugged in at night to, to charging. It's ridiculous. Right on. <laughs> and remember, I guess this isn't just food, right? So right. if you need something from the hardware store, or the grocery store, I mean, you obviously probably need to be pretty comprehensive in exactly what you want. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that would definitely be helpful. Um, like, the, you know, the guy had measurements and took a picture of the air filter. So I knew, you know, right. what, which one to get, but yeah. Um, yeah. Any, anything you need really, as long as it's not a refrigerator, I can't do those. yet. <laughs> Just a little heavy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess that makes sense. Right. So you've got to screen this and make sure that it's something within your capabilities of delivering. <laughs> yes. Did you deliver a Christmas tree by any chance? Yes. Anyone say run down to the corner lot and get me a Christmas tree? I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I should have, that was, I missed out on that one. <laughs> I should have, I should have done that. I do uh, need a big trailer. I, yeah, I do. Uh, I could get like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree for him. <laughs> right. I, uh, I, I do a Valentine's day special though where i do like a because i'm a, a poet as well so i'll do a, a a handwritten card for the person and then like i team up with a local bakery or whatever and then dessert for two people and then like a rose and stuff and i'll deliver it to them on valentine's day and uh it, that went over pretty well last year actually so i'm looking forward to seeing how it does this year fantastic well listeners as you can hear jeremy hurt is on his way uh he's got the red bike delivery that hit their one year anniversary back in december um you know again we don't have the number right in front of us but if you go to redbikedelivery.co or search red bike delivery on most social media platforms you will find a phone number you and will. at the time being shoot him a text tell him what you need and he'll get right back to you to confirm he can do it yep innovation from the founder of Red Bike Delivery, Mr. Jeremy Hurt. Thanks for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you.